Hi, and welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to cover variables, tabs, and formulas. This family of Equihacks grammar lets you package parts of a screener together, giving it a variable name. Then you can hide the details, showing them under a tab at the bottom of your editor page. This should make your screener easier to read. You can also use the variable to create a formula. You will see lots of variables, tabs, and formulas in use when you examine existing screeners that come with Equihack. This lesson will help you understand what you are looking at and how to make the changes if you want. Let's start by creating a variable. First we'll create a screen of medical manufacturers. You know the drill. Click Create Stock Screeners on the home page. Then accept or create a name for your screener. Click the red question mark to open the first stock screener box. Let's work with the classify as operator because it's a quick way to create several tests and it's an interesting operator to know even if you never hide it under a tab. Type class and press return. The classify operator has a boolean equals true false operator in its core. In this example, it will save you from having to dig through codes to identify particular industries and sectors. You deal with everything in plain English names. Let's start with companies that make drugs. Enter DR and press return to accept the single drug manufacturing prompt. Continuing, let's add another. Type a comma to open another box in the series. Then enter MED. There are several interesting choices. We'll pick them off one at a time. Let's start with medical devices. Type another comma. Type MED again. And this time select the bottom one, medical instruments and equipment. Let's add another box with a comma and go after the biotechnology industry. The comma may not work unless the cursor is over the last field created. You don't have to click on that last field, just let Equihack know where you are focused. In this case it popped a new box open, let's type BIO in it and we're given biotechnology. Notice that all of the choices are stacked on top of one another with the true-false condition classified as one of at the top. The choices are connected with OR logic. If any are true, the stock will be selected. So that gives us four industry groups that manufacture drugs and equipment for doctors and hospitals. Let's have see how many companies show up matching our screener. Press go and put Equities Lab to work. At the time this was run, there were 566 stocks that match our screener. That's a lot to review, but let's see if we're going down an interesting path by running a back test. Click the blue button to the right of the go button to do this. This opens the screen to set up the back test the way you want. The choices are fine for our purposes, so click run. After a little wait, while the Equity Lab computer looks through all the stocks, you will see the results as a three-year graph. Your selected stocks, the green line, beat the general market, the brown line. As a group, they would have doubled your money. A rising tide raises all boats, they say. Let's break it down to see if we can get good results with fewer stocks. Click the green plus sign to add a new clause. Your classify as test has been converted to a straight line to make room for the new clause. Equihack does this from time to time to help you see what's happening. The different vertical and horizontal formats just change your view. They do not change the logic. Let's test for companies with a market cap of over $30 billion in our new added clause. Click Go to see the results of this. We reduced it to 30 matches. This is a more manageable group. Let's back test it. Notice that the 
Overall results are similar as before, but they have less volatility because the stocks are bigger. I'm not giving investment advice here. We're discussing Equihax grammar. We've isolated a group of medical stocks with a new operator to classify as. We have seen each of its choices are connected with or logic between them. If any are true, select the stock. We've added a second clause. It identified we wanted only large companies. It is the second true-false test in the screener. It is connected to the classify as test with and logic. Both tests must be true to select the stock. Now let's create our first variable. We'll do that to include all the words in the classify as operation. It can take up a lot of space on the page. We know what it's doing. Creating a variable will be the first step to hiding all the details under a tab. Let's give that group a name, any name we want. Because this variable is a true-false test, it must begin with is, has, or not. I'll explain later. Click on the classify operator and select the top prompt, new variable. A new view appears. A highlighted box suggests the default name of classify as. Replace it with your name. Just enter it using all lowercase letters. Don't worry about typing the underscores between words. Equihack inserts them for you. Press return and it's accepted. One of the goals of creating this variable name was to reduce the clutter on our screener. We do this by creating a tab. Click on the name you just entered, the is med mfrs, the name of the variable. Select the six prompted drop choice in the drop down menu. Move variable to a new tab. All of the conditions shown in the group disappear behind a box on your screener. The variable name is on top. Notice the new tab showing on the blue bar at the bottom of your screener is med mfrs. Click it. All the details have been moved to this path. You can make changes to or add to its instructions here. This lets you clean up your screener. It's particularly valuable in longer screeners. Choose your variable names carefully. It's a great way of documenting your work. Variables can enclose true-false statements like the example above, or they can enclose arithmetic calculations. When used to group an arithmetic calculation, you do not add is, has, or not in front of its name. That's because the result will be a number. Let's create an arithmetic variable and add tab. First, click off of the med MFRs tab and go back to your editor. Click the green plus sign to add a clause. We wonder what the results will be if the screener selects companies with greater debt, if they are more leveraged and less conservative. So let's divide debt by assets. If debt exceeds one-third of assets, we're interested. Start with the true-false greater than symbol. Expand the box to the left with a slash for divide. Enter TD in the first box and select the prompted total debt. Total debt 1Q is the most recent quarter's total debt. Enter TA in the second box and select the second line total assets a quarter ago. We wanted those companies who had a debt that was greater than one-third, so enter 33% in that third box. Click Go. Now we're only looking at six matches. Six companies remain from the 24 that we started with. Let's do the back test icon and see what happens to the results. At over 250%, this almost doubles the returns that we saw earlier. Again, I'm not giving investment advice. Let's call this calculation that we've added leverage. Not exactly a precise use of this new term. We can call it anything we want. Equihax won't correct us. To turn this instruction into a variable, click on the divide operator and select new variable. 
You see a new box on top of the divide operation with VAR in it. Replace the VAR with leverage and press return. Next, let's create a tab. Click the leverage name you just entered. Select the sixth choice. Move variable to new tab. Click it. The calculation disappears. It's replaced by a box called leverage. A new tab is added along the bottom called leverage. Click on it and you see the contents, the divide statement. If you want a quick glimpse of what's in one of these variables on the screener page, just put your cursor on the name and the pop-up box will show you exactly what is in the variable. You're now ready to use these variables to create two formulas. You have two pieces of tested logic. You gave them names and you created variables. A formula can be long or short, simple or complex. It's actually just a space in Equities Labs library to hold a copy of your variable for use in other screeners later. Start by clicking the Is Med MFRs tab. Then click on the top box that shows the Is Med MFRs and select the seventh prompt. Save variables as a formula. You're given a dialog box and invited to explain what this formula does. We'll skip that for now and OK the formula. Let's see if we can find the formula that we've now created. Click the Tools tab in the lower left corner. Then click the Sigma icon on the top to show only the formulas. Notice that your formula is now listed under My Formulas. You can follow the same steps with Leverage variable. Then the two formulas will show under My Formulas ready for its use in other screeners. Your formulas will work just like any other system formulas you find on the tools list. Let's digest a few concepts you have learned in Equihack. You can create variable names. Variables can tally or test many conditions. These st statements may return a true-false answer or a numeric value. Once you create a variable name, it will appear in the drop-down prompts as you add more instructions to the screener. This allows you to use a calculation again and again within your screener without having to type all of the calculations again and again. If you make a variable a tab, it hides the details and cleans up the screener. If you make the tab a formula, you can use it in other screeners. So how do you use formulas? There are two basic groups of formulas, my formulas and systems formulas. They work the same way. Let's add a systems formula to our screener called Podrowski F-score T12. That's the F-score for the trailing 12 months. It may or may not improve our results. Click on the green plus to add a new clause in the editor. Go to the editor first and then click the green arrow See an empty box? Equihex gives you five ways to find and insert the Petrowski formula in the empty box. The first way is to click the Tools tab again and click the Sigma bar if not selected. This shows just the formulas. Since there's so many formulas, I recommend that you type PIO in the Filter by box. Highlight the Petrowski 12-month formula. Either click it or drag it to the empty box. It will show there with the suggested greater than operator and also adds a tab. Petrowski returns a number so Equihack adds a needed true-false operator. Another way is to follow the drop-down prompts when you click on the empty box. Select Add Content, Add Formula. A box of just formulas will pop up. Scroll down through the formulas or type PIO again to narrow the search. Once again you see the choice you want, Petrowski F-score trailing 12 months. This time only the tab is added. Start the instruction in the empty box by entering a greater than symbol. 
to create a true false. Then click the left box and type P I O and you're prompted with your new tab. Select it. Another good approach is to gather up the formulas you will be using before you start adding clauses that need them. Click Editor, Add Formula, and Add Formula again, and you receive the same prompting box. Once again, you can type PIO and click the Petrowski. At this point, there's no box to be filled, but the tab is available for you to use. You can get the same result by using shortcuts. There's Shift Control F on a PCs or Shift Command F on Macs. Feel free to test what this formula does in the screener. As you may have read, the higher Petrowski score, the stronger the stock. Numbers between 1 and 9 may have an effect. There is a six way you might try to add a formula, but it isn't the right path to take. This happens if you click the Explorer bar on the left edge to find the formula there. You will be asked if you want to save the screener you are now working on. You don't really. It will open a new page with just the selected formula. This is a path that you can use to make changes to just formulas. Finally, there is a seventh way to add a formula to your screener. Import it. You type import and a space and the name of the formula you want. you will be prompted with the formula name. Notice that you have an orange entry this time. Only the name in the box is imported. No tab is added to your search. What's the difference? The first five ways moved a copy of the selected formula to your current screener where it was set up as a variable with a tab. You are free to change it. If you do, nothing changes in the formula library. It is a Las Vegas rule. What happens in your screener stays in your screener. Even when you save your screener, the formula library stays unchanged. And once added to your current screener, any changes made to the formula in the formula library will not change your screener. But when you import an orange formula, you just link to the current version of that formula in the library. If you change the library version, all your screeners with orange links to it will be changed the next time they are run. This can be very powerful if you have a family of screeners that are dependent on a condition you want to change from time to time. One final parting shot. Yes, you can pull in a system formula, change it, and save it. Your change formula goes into the My Formulas section. The system will not let you change the system formula. Don't worry. And yes, you can change one of your formulas and save it explicitly from a screener. If you don't change the name, it will overwrite the existing formula, but it will only change in other screeners if they have referred to it with an imported orange link. Or you delete and re-add the updated formula by hand in the other screeners. That's it. Thanks for watching.